Hey, welcome back everybody. Hello to our online students. Uh, this slide here is our solubility rules. We need this table here to be able to predict whether or not chemical compounds, when they come together, form a precipitate. Now you could just copy this down or just say, okay, I've got this thing here. I can just use this as a reference like the periodic table. But I'm going to ask you to write it down in your notes as I'm writing it on the board because the act of writing it down does help with learning. It, it's, it's cognitively, they call it remoto neural something or other. It's, it's getting the brain and the hands and the muscles all working together and it helps with learning. And then also if you have questions as we go along, that'll help. Because in the end, what will happen is, is say on an exam, you might be given a table like this and I might give you a compound and say, okay, will this dissolve in water? And you have to be able to use this table to, to make, make that prediction. So students then ask, well, do I need to memorize this? I say, well, no, you don't necessarily need to memorize it, but you do need to be able to use it. You have to be able to navigate this piece of information in, in order to solve some problems. All right. So to get us started here, this is our solubility rules. Solubility rules, and this is just going to help us to determine whether or not something dissolves in water or does not. So I'm going to start out with rule number one. Let's see here. Rule number one. Okay, rule number one. If these things are present, it's soluble in water. Okay, so I'm going to say um, soluble. If contains these things. So if you see these things, think, all right, this is going to be soluble in water. So group 1A cations. Um, and examples of that would be like lithium, sodium, potassium. If it contains these things, group 1A metals, group 1A cations, it is soluble. Also, if it contains nitrate, it's soluble. Acetate, it is soluble. Now acetate is written this way. Sometimes it's written a little bit differently. Sometimes it's written like this, where we have C2H3O2 minus. It's the same thing. It's just written a little bit differently, but it's the same thing. This is acetate. And if we have this compound or, or have this in a compound, it is soluble. And the other thing is ammonium, NH4 plus. So any of these things, if we see these in a compound, it's going to be soluble in water. Now, any questions on that? Rule number one. If we see these things, think soluble. Okay. Then rule number two. These things are soluble, but there's exceptions. So soluble... Soluble. So these things are soluble. So um, our, our halides, our group 17 el elements. So this is things such as chlorine or bromine or iodine. These things are soluble except with except with. So if these other things are present with these, then it is no longer soluble. And these exceptions are uh, silver ion, copper, notice this is just a copper with uh, plus one, not plus two, and mercury and lead. Now, copper does come as, as a plus two cation, um, but this is just the, the, the one plus. And so these things are always soluble, except if these are present, then it will form a precipitate. 
also sulfates. Um, SO4 to minus is soluble except with if these other things are present. And this is going to be uh, barium or calcium or lead or strontium. So sulfates, we think of these as being soluble, except if these things are present. If these things are present, they, com they combine and form a precipitate. Okay. Any questions on that? Okay. Then our last rule, rule number three. So these things... Uh, and our table, it says slightly soluble, only slightly soluble. Uh, I'm going to go out on a limb here and just say not really soluble. So slightly soluble means like, eh, just a little bit, but mostly not. And people will argue over this and they'll fight and such. Is it soluble? Is it only slightly soluble? Is it not soluble? I'm like, yeah, well, it, well, let's just say not soluble. In actuality, just a very, very small amount will go into solution, but as far as we're concerned, mostly not. Not really soluble. So not soluble. Okay, so these things are not soluble. So um, hydroxides, these are not soluble, except if they're combined with something that is soluble. So for example, if we have, say, um, Ammonium hydroxide. Ammonium is soluble. Hydroxide is not soluble. But if they're combined together, it'll be not soluble. Excuse me, it'll be soluble. Okay? Uh, if we have potassium hydroxide, potassium is soluble. So therefore, this will be soluble. So I'm going to put like a big star like this. Okay? So it's not soluble except with something that would make it soluble. Um, sulfates, excuse me, sulfides. These are insoluble unless they're with something that makes it soluble. So again, for example, if we have, say, sodium sulfide, that would be soluble because sodium is soluble. Um, carbonates, these are insoluble, except with these up here. Maybe I'll put this like this here, if that helps. Okay, put a little star there. So carbonates are insoluble, and so are phosphates. Except with something up here. Any questions? Yes, sir. If you have... Mm -hmm. uh, would barium be... Okay, so if you have barium combined with this. Okay, so yes, that would be soluble. So... Barium, calcium, lead, strontium, these are the exceptions for sulfate, but, but not the exceptions for chlorine, bromine, or iodine. Yep. So based off of that, um, if you had, um, it was barium chloride, barium chloride would be soluble, because chlorine is soluble, or chloride is soluble, except with these, and barium's not one of those. Yep. Excellent. Now, um, the last time we got together, we had a net ionic equation where we had barium aqueous and sulfate aqueous, and these combined together to give us barium sulfate. 
And I told you that the barium sulfate formed a precipitate. In other words, it was not soluble. And I didn't explain why. And, and I said, well, you'll just have to wait. You'll just have to wait until the next time we get together because I'm not going to share that little nugget of information with you. That makes me valuable, right? Because that way if somebody was going to knock me off in the next 24 hours, like, you know, I was really thinking about doing it, but we do need this bit of information, right? So I'm going to keep them around just a little bit longer. That's not the way you think? Okay, that's good. That's good. All right. That's a positive thing. All right, so now as we look at this, the barium sulfate, we go over here and we say, all right, um, ah, sulfate. Here, sulfate is, is soluble except with barium. And so that's how we predicted, or I predicted here, that barium sulfate forms the precipitate. That's where that came from. Uh, now, there's another type of reaction, a uh, net ionic reaction, and that is one that doesn't form a precipitate, and that is where we have um, an acid and a base comes together and forms water. Now, in this example here, we have hydrochloric acid, and this is the full ionic equation. We have hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide gives us sodium chloride or salt and water. So we're forming water in this reaction. Basically, we're forming salt water. Now, we have spectator ions in here, and our spectator ions are the ones that appear on both sides, and nothing changes. So if nothing changes on either side, these are our spectator ions, we cancel those out. And then that leaves us then with water. And so our net ionic equation for this one is hydrogen ion plus hydroxide ion gives us water. And so we don't really think of water as being a precipitate, but this is an example where our net ionic equation here is water. A little odd, a little weird, just kind of one of those odd little nuggets. Okay. The other thing I'll throw out to you is, is pharmaceutical companies, when they come up with a molecule, that they need it to be absorbed into your bloodstream. And your bloodstream is mostly water, which means that drug needs to be soluble in water. And a lot of drugs, when they first come up with them, are not soluble in water. So what they do is they will react them so that way, chemically, they could add something like this to the drug. And if they can add, like, say, lithium, sodium, potassium to the drug, then that makes that drug soluble. And so that way it gets through the bloodstream. So there's, there's a whole pharmaceutical science involved in that. Just kind of a side thing. Okay. All right. Then, based off of that, Does it make sense? You have to have a certain background in chemistry in order to catch some of these memes. 